Hi, today we're going to be talking about multiple, double, or multiplying, so sorry, multiplying, I misspelled that one, multiplying double digits. So um, this is from topic eight, and we're going to be doing a mixture of fourth and fifth grade. So um, today we're going to be doing an anchor chart uh, for both, and then um, a little mixture of fifth grade video that I don't think will be too, too difficult. Um, <clears throat> but let's go through. I don't want to make things too easy, but I don't want to make things too difficult. So let's first start with our anchor chart. So um, we're going to be talking, and I'm going to make this smaller, of course. Let's see. All right, so on the top of your anchor chart, go ahead and write the title multiplying or multiply sorry double digits but basically you know that this anchor chart is about multiplying double digits so there's a way to kind of memorize I know this is a review for all of you um, there's a way that I want you to start kind of memorizing how to remember your multiplying with double digits and it's called many which basically is the acronym for multiply. So many, kind of think of Ivan on this one, many zoos, and zoos means you add the zero, especially when it's time for the place value. So many zoos, let's see if this is green, many zoos, many animals so many again would be multiply and then if there are many zoos there's got to be many animals in those zoos so write that acronym down acronym of course means we're taking um the first letter of each word and creating many multiply zoos zero many again multiply and animals the a and add so what we're going to be doing are four steps so we're going to have a step one a step two a step three and a step four Whenever you do a double digit multiplication, you'll have your four steps. So the first step you're going to be taking will be your multiply. So that just means you're looking at the ones place. And I'm gonna put the word ones. You'll be looking at your ones place and multiplying those. And then the next step that you'll be doing is and you guys may remember this from when we were in class is you're adding the zero right below it in the ones place so this allows when you add the zero and we'll do an example course this allows us to move to the tens place and then of course Step three, you're going to multiply the numbers in the tens place. And then finally, step four, you will add the numbers that you have created in the ones place and the numbers that you have created in the tens place. Okay, so now let's take a look. Let's do an example together. So a good example together would be, let's say, we will multiply 82 times 47. So go ahead, write that on your paper. I'll give you a few seconds. Write that down. And when we, when we look at 82 times 47, we need to think of step one. We're going to multiply the number in the ones place. So kind of like right 
here. What color was that? I believe it was. So sorry. I believe we were multiplying the numbers in the ones place. So I'm going to multiply my 7 times 2, which equals 14. Put a little 1 up there, plus 1. And then I'm going to cross multiply. And I'm going to multiply my 8 times 7, which equals my 56. And my once I have my 56, I'm going to add my 1 there. So 57. And then I'm going to put my 0, which is the blue. So right below, I'll put my 0. Because now I'm going to start multiplying the number in the tens place. The number in the tens place right here. So I'm going to start out multiplying my 4 times 2, which equals 8. And then I'm going to, so I went like this, and now I'm going to go up and down 8 times 4, and 8 times 4, which equals 32. So I write down my 32. And now the very last step I'm going to do is to add these numbers. So as long as you have them in the correct place value, um, you shall be fine. So the 4 plus 0, of course, equals 4. And the 7 plus 8, I know 7 plus 7, 14 plus 1, 15. So 7 plus 8 equals 15. So I put down the 5. Make sure you carry that 1. 1 plus 5 equals 6. 6 plus 2 equals 8. And then 3 plus 0 equals 3. You can do the comma if you want. So in the end, our answer would be 3,854. So that's the first way that you can answer a double-digit problem. On Thursday, we're going to go through and I'll teach you a second way that you can answer a double-digit problem. All right, good job, you guys. Thank you for focusing. And now we will do our homework. Thanks.